ています。Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we will be talking about the repertoire choice against the Catalan. The Catalan is a combination of the moves d4, c4, and g3. So a typical way for white to play would be like this, or play g3 on the fourth move. Um, as we will see, we will reach a position this one that could also happen from knight f3 first, b5, and then g3. The Catalan is important to study, and um, the main reason why it is important to study is that the popularity of the opening has increased quite a bit. On the top level, you see it very frequently, and it has definitely <clears throat> become yeah, more, I think even maybe a more principal choice on the top level than some queen's gambit lines because white is not getting anywhere in these. And the Catalan is not as, let's say, heavily analyzed yet. It is already quite a bit of theory on uh, <clears throat> on the top level. They, they have analyzed um, to, to an enormous depth there as well, but it's not comparable to some queen's gambit lines. And what the top guys play is relevant <clears throat> for every level because people will imitate. Even if you are in a club game, people will still adapt what they see um, from, from people like Dingre Ren or Caruana or every top player has the Catalan basically in their repertoire. Um, in particular, of course, if they, if they start D4 in the first place. So what to play against the Catalan. Yeah, unsurprisingly, we, we need to play d5. Yeah, white can also, I mean, here we would have um, more options even, yeah, play c5 or give the check. But as um, said before, a common move order is this. So we are committed to d5. So after g3, we will play d5. And now white has the mentioned choice to play bishop g2 for first or knight f3 first. Um, the difference is relatively uh, minor between the two moves. It will often simply transpose to the same thing. Our um, main move, um, as it is structured here in the chapter of this course, is knight f3, simply because you will meet this position more often due to the mentioned move order with knight f3 um, being played first. So let's have a look at bishop g2. Um, against bishop g2, just as we will play against knight f3, we will play bishop to b4 check. Yeah, this is, um, I think, a very um, attractive choice for black. And the reason why I think this is because it's a very good, um, it hits um, a sweet spot in a way. This line is very sound and well respected from a theoretical point of view. It is played by my many top players. So it is a sound and very um, a very good line, objectively speaking, and it um, I think also offers Black some chances to win the game because the resulting positions will often be uh, rather complex. So we don't have many early piece trades and many lines, for example. So I think it's a good it's a good choice as a practical weapon and also considering its very good theoretical standing. The idea of the check is that white now um, obviously have three possible replies and um, every reply has a bit of a drawback and we will look at them one by one. Um, we start with the move knight c3. This is not a move that you will probably encounter here very often but it is um, it has some additional relevance because the position that you have now could easily arise from a Nimzo Indian. I want to show this. If you have the Nimzo and white now place the move g3, you would get to the same line. This is exactly the same position. So we have a ready-made um, answer, let's say, against the g3 Nimzo. Uh, if we study the bishop b4 line, it can lead to the same positions. So knight c3, we will castle. And now um, white has a fundamental choice. He can um, keep offering this pawn or he can take on d5. I mean, after knight f3, we will, we will grab the pawn. So that's, that's the main line here. So sometimes white wants to avoid that and 
takes on d5. This doesn't really uh, bother us at all. We can, of course, simply take and now um, set up a position with c6 and rook e8. This is a very healthy position, very good development. We have no problem piece that's important. This, for example, can easily develop to f5. And it is not so clear what White's bishop is doing on g2. This is a common problem. If the bishop is fancadoed and it faces his pawn wall, that can be an issue sometimes to generate some play. Um, I think here we can uh, simply stop and conclude that black is fine. It is a bit more frequently seen that white keeps the tension and plays knight f3. And here um, there's more than one possible way to play here, but I think the most principled one and best one is to take. Just take the pawn and ask white about his intentions. How do you want to get this back? This is not that easy. And this is a typical thing when the knight is on c3. It um, can be easier to get the pawn back if, for example, you could attack it with queen c2 or queen a4 in some, in some cases. This is how the pawn is often recovered in the classical Catalan main lines. Here the knight on c3 is stopping this idea. We um, have chances to keep the pawn or in some cases return it because white needs to spend time to get it back. So um, white now um, usually castles. That looks very logical. First get the king out, unpin the knight and then see how to get it back. Now um, it's important to remember the setup that we play here. We should play knight c6. This is the most active move. This was a free preview of our anti 1d4 course based on the Nimzu Indian and Rogozin available on chessable.com. Thanks for watching and see you soon.